Now let's get into the record company company operations, and I really want to ask some questions about the 360 degree deal, which has become pretty common in the music industry, and uh, many uh, the knocks on uh, doing 360 deals with particularly major labels such as yours is that many people feel that the record labels are passive in many of the activities beyond recording, like touring or merchandising or sponsorships. Um, uh, can you give me an, uh, an idea of how your label and others are becoming more involved in the non-traditional revenue streams as far as being actively involved in, in making things happen for their artists in these other areas besides recordings? You are voicing a position that sounds like somebody that may have had a bad experience with a record label or they may have felt like their label just wedged on and leached off their other, you know, uh, uh, um, their other revenue streams. Well, that's exactly why I asked this question, because I think that that is the attitude that you hear that's projected most in this industry. And that's why I wanted to speak to you and other people, because I certainly know of situations where it's been very beneficial to artists. Yeah. And well, uh, go ahead. Let me say this. Again, I'm going to give you, I give you long-winded answers, but if you follow me, I'm going to bring it around in a circle. All right. Um, the future of the music business is about four years away, I think. I think around 2017, 18, 19. Um, that's when the great golden, the new golden era of the record business is coming. I think it's the gold rush for 1849, and it's like 1845 right now. All right. Um, and that gold rush is going to be precipitated by ubiquitous Wi-Fi, general broadband. The right. idea that when I open my laptop, I'm going to have 20 options for Internet. I'm going to have Verizon, Google, AT&T, Time Warner Cable, Cablevision, five companies that haven't been invented yet that are going to get into that business. Right. But providing super broadband is going to become a, the, the sort of the next frontier, I think, in digital technology. Um, and I kind of know I have a lot of friends in this world, and compression right. technology takes a certain number of years to uh, to take hold, et cetera. But in about four years, it, when this new super Wi-Fi gets offered, um, everybody that opens their laptop and logs onto one of their streams that they either a pay a monthly, uh, uh, they either pay for monthly, they get it for free, and it's advertising supported. Or there's like a super luxury version that's you know uh, even faster than your monthly version uh, that gives you internet you know at speeds you can't even imagine. And you're talking about music services. Not even music what? services. Oh, I'm just, talking about just, just internet. This got is it. Just this is basic. This got is it. first Google or Verizon. They're, they're all at war right now trying to see who's going to get this magic stream. It's going to be a right. multi hundred billion dollar play. Um, but once you have this super internet, uh, even your monthly. Um, yeah, even your, the, I like to think of like the monthly subscription model, which is I think what most of the middle class of America and the world is going to use. And this middle, this monthly $49 internet, $49 a month is going to be a hundred thousand times faster than your home internet cable right now. Um, and once that really kicks in, that's when you're going to see the death of the personal hard drive. That's when you're going to see, uh, the true cloud kicking in. Uh, and people saying, sure, I could download it for free, but who wants to download anything? I don't have a hard drive. What a pain in the butt. I have server farms everywhere, and my cloud is instant. You know, It'll make your iPhone feel like a 200 terabyte hard drive. <laughs> um, and this, uh, uh, this cloud and this monthly cable bill that you're going to pay or monthly Wi-Fi bill, there's going to be a box that you're going to X off just like you X off your HBO right now. Right. And that box will be for Spotify or Beats Music or one of the future uh, music subscription services. But that box will be about $13 a month or $10 a month or $15 a month. And it'll offer you every song in the history of mankind, every live performance uploaded every Tuesday with curated playlists, your own playlists, your Pandora type uh, 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 radio, all of those options are going to be there and they're going to be seamless and perfect and everywhere that you go on airplanes and you're going to have this this reception in, in, in subways and when you're walking into your car there's going to be ubiquitous Wi-Fi and ubiquitous music and when music becomes ubiquitous the the 
the product that they're going to offer for $13 a month is simply going to be so much more convenient right. than pirating music and downloading, you know, BitTorrent. What a pain in the butt. And you have to throw it in your, make your own play. No one's going to want to deal with it. They're just going to say, screw it. I need my internet because everybody right. needs internet. It's going to be something that's going to be like cable is now. You know, kids in college have cable that can barely afford it. They still know they need it. They need right. it. Um, and when people start spending money on music in that capacity because it's going to be so convenient and you scale it to India, China, right. Europe, Australia, Canada, the aggregate amount of money in the music industry is going to be massive. In 2001, we were a $40 billion business, which was music and publishing combined. That was right. always the RIAA quote for the general aggregate music industry. Um, and, you know, I could be wrong, and you may show this uh, 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 to somebody in five years and say that Jacobson guy couldn't have been more off. But right. I think that uh, conservatively it's going to be a $50 billion business in 2020. And that's only because people won't believe me when I tell you I think it's going to be a $70 billion business. The reason I'm telling you all of this, this is important for you to follow here, All right, is that until we hit the tipping point, until we hit critical mass in this new subscription service, which is going to depend on Wi-Fi and ubiquitous Wi-Fi taking over to happen, um, until we hit that number, record labels don't have money. We, don't, we have cash flow problems, very real cash flow issues. If you're an artist and you're signing to a record label, you have to know that your label as a machine doesn't have as much cash flow as it will and as it used to be. Back in the 90s, we had enough cash flow that we could handle all versions of the artist development on our own without having to share in publishing or touring because we were making enough money off recorded music. Right. Right. The recorded master was valuable enough that we could handle that side and use that to invest in the artist development. Artist development costs money. Hit records cost money. Coordinating a global radio campaign around the world, making sure that there's a advertising campaign that's supporting your record at radio. It's not enough just to have a hit at radio. You've got to have money being spent on the advertising around that hit so people know what the song is. Otherwise, it becomes what's called the turntable hit, a record that's big on radio but doesn't sell. Right. In order to connect those two and to bridge all of that, it takes thousands of people and millions of dollars. I wish that there was some utopian world that that didn't have to happen. But even in situations where there's an independent artist who owns his own rights, like a Macklemore, who right. is a wonderful story, there was still a multi-thousand person campaign and a radio campaign that pushed to get to those records to number one. He absolutely created the buzz on his own and created enough buzz that he had uh, enough leverage in his uh, um, negotiations for a record deal to be able to maintain his rights. Correct. But, you know... I wish that everybody worked that way, and maybe they'll do that in the future. But in the meantime, if you're going to come to me, and maybe you're moving at 30 or 40 or 50 miles an hour, but you want to go to 150 miles an hour, it costs money. Right. The 360 deal provides us with an opportunity to be able to, in the short term, create a cash flow, uh, 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 to create some cash flow to continue to market these records. Because we're not making a, enough money off of 700,000 albums and a million singles. Mm. That's $10 million gross, which is a lot of money. But when it costs us $8 million to get to that $10 million gross number, we're not making enough profit. And If we had a business that operated off of a $2 million profit for a ten, an $8 million expense, uh, 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 it's just not sustainable. It doesn't exist. It's math. Uh, I wish it were different. Maybe it will be down the line. But in the meantime... If somebody on that $10 million worth of records sold, right, singles plus albums, can add $3 million between publishing and touring contributions to the bottom line, that affects everything. That makes it so that we can run our business. We're a public company. We're owned by Vivendi. Vivendi is a stock ticker. We have to make profit in order to maintain our existence. Um, uh, uh, I know that people can get upset and feel like they have, were extremely profitable but now they're uh, 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 and other people weren't. In this. I mean, I, I've heard it all. Yeah, not yeah. really. Matters. You know, not doesn't matter. But right. people be realistic about the fact that we have a business to run. Right. And if you want us to continue to invest in your project, which we want to do, we have to have ways to be able to support ourselves. Great. Now, now let me ask you this, Neil. Because in that regard, then, are you actively involved? And I'm, I'm saying this because I think you guys purchased Bravado. Is that correct? 
Correct. Well, for merchant, and that that's the thing. Are you bringing in other areas? Are you partnering with management companies that are going to assist you in this three hundred and sixty degree no, no, effort? No. Give it a different way. Stop okay. thinking about it like that. It's not about you don't. No business operates in the specifics of exactly who does what, where they do it, and what they're doing. I mean, that's okay. not that's not the nature. By the way, it's not the nature in our business. It's not okay. how Nike does business. This is not how global branding companies that deal with mass initiatives handle their things. We're not, there's a million different ways that I might help out with something, and there's a million different ways that other things that I am at the core of making happen will happen around me without me directly making it. That's not what our business is. What we're saying is, I'm going to invest our labels' time, money, initiatives, our focus. We're going to invest our resources, our connections, and we're going to invest in your property and developing this property. And as this property develops and we make a hit record or a hit video or a hit advertising campaign or whatever it is that we're doing as a team that is helping take your copyrights and make them more valuable, mm -hmm. we are going to share in the value of those copyrights. When Got we make it. a hit record and it's a number one record around the world, it's not that hard to get a merch deal. It's right. not that hard to get a big promotion deal. We're the ones that are spending the money to help make your hit record and your hit record is going to be what you need to sell tickets. You right. Know? A lot of people have a utopian view. There's a lot of acts that sell without radio, and that's fine. And I have a lot of acts that are successful without radio. But there's no acts that are successful without marketing themselves. And yeah. we're helping market you. And if we help build this brand, we need to share in all the revenue streams. Otherwise, we can't spend enough money to help make you the star that you want to be. That's it's fantastic. It doesn't exist. That's great, Neil. And how's that working for you? Are all these other revenue streams, are they actually starting to generate income sure. that will help sure. meet the bottom for line? Everybody, not just for us, for yeah. our artists. Right. You know, when we are when we're getting paid our ancillary revenues, if we're at a point where we're getting paid ancillaries, yes. the artist is getting paid. Got it. And that's great for everybody.